You run this digital wealth management firm, and this year you were on the Financial Times Outstanding LGBT Plus list. Um, tell me about your journey. Just you're in this financial tech world, and mm -hmm. you're in a publicly out gay CEO. So um, my background is uh, I, I grew up in North London, uh, working class family. My father is a milkman in North East London, still is. Um, and uh, I, you know, I worked hard at school, ended up at Cambridge University, and that opened up a huge number of doors. Um, so I uh, started my career at um, Procter & Gamble, uh, spent seven years there, mainly based in Switzerland, uh, founded their LGBT network, as it happens. Um, and then I moved into the energy sector from there, back in the UK, um, working for EDF. Mm -hmm. um, Worked there for seven years, uh, and um, I, I reached a point in my career really where I was able to take a little bit more risk, but I was also very keen to move into a more early stage business. Uh, what I had done while at Procter Gamble is on the side, I launched uh, the first ever um, gay specific speed dating service in the world um, in London. It's called Pink Speed Dating. It doesn't exist anymore, but it was it was very good fun. So I had a taste for um, kind of startup type environment, and I think what really talked to me about nutmeg in particular um, really goes back to my work class roots uh, to some extent um, nearly half of uh, well, over half of people in the UK are not confident they're going to be able to retire and what Nutmeg is trying to do is to democratize wealth management and open it up to a much broader section of society and so I saw this service and I thought well that's for people like me um, as well as uh, a really broad diverse uh, mix of people across the UK and so that's why I joined Nutmeg it's a hugely exciting business very fast growing with the fastest growing wealth manager in the UK um, and uh, we've got a fantastic uh, team down in Vauxhall, uh, very diverse team actually, um, working to basically deliver for our customers every day. Do you think that, I mean the UK has been focused a lot on gender diversity, they have to report pay gaps, certain yeah. companies, a lot of in the, uh, people in the industry are talking about getting a no, set number of women on boards, etc. Do you think we're focusing too much on den gender, we need to move on to other forms of diversity at companies or maybe businesses need to move on beyond, we just wrapped up Pride Month, right, yeah. where we see a lot of businesses Businesses really take pride on board. Do you need to do more to, you know, flag diversity inclusion beyond that? So I think it comes down to what is the intent of the organization and what's it trying to achieve. I think organizations that have the right kind of structures in place to attract the best talent um, are going to be more successful, uh, it's pretty obvious, than those that are not. Um, and the kind of things you need to do to improve gender diversity are very similar to the things you need to do to improve LGBT diversity, to improve ethnic diversity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so actually, I think that all of these different initiatives and programs, there's massive overlaps across them. Uh, and so I think, I, I think if, if, you, if the intent is to create an environment where you attract the best talent and the best talent can do the best work of their lives, then that's going to lead you down a path of creating the right structures and policies for all types of diversity. There's, there's, there's a recent report out from Allianz and it shows that more than half of women still believe financial services are geared towards men. Yep. Have you kind of changed how you approached women, maybe that like, you know, a normal retail shop would? Yeah. So. Um, at the very heart of what Nutmeg does is we're, we're, we're democratizing wealth management to, opening up, to open it up to a much broader section of society. And people from all walks of life have life goals, they have dreams, they have things they're trying to aspire towards, men and women, gay people, straight people, bisexual people, everyone has goals in life and we want to seek to serve everyone to help them achieve their goals. Um, so with that in mind, um, what we do is we um, have built an organization which does have diversity within it that enables us to better understand the customers we're trying to serve um, to service them um, and rather than what traditional wealth managers are doing which is very white male kind of if you attract white male you then com to communicate to white men and you you kind of reinforce that stereotype that it is a male dominated industry so by having a diverse organization that helps you to serve customers better but what we also do is we put simplicity and transparency at the very heart of our proposition with a world leading user experience. And that makes uh, our service much more accessible to many more people in society, um, whether they're male or female. So what we see in particular on gender diversity is around a third of our customers are female. Mm -hmm. And that is well above the industry average where it's about 25%. So already through having simplicity at the heart of our service, we're attracting more women. We're making it, we're making it much less kind of... Um, a bit more accepted. Uh, we make it accessible. more accessible, making it easier to, to interact uh, without having to understand what an ETF is, for example. Right. Um, if, if you want to go into the detail of an ETF, you can, sure. but we're, that isn't where we start. We start with what's your goal? 
what you're trying to achieve and how can we help you do that. And do you know what? We find that our female investors have much better investor behaviours than the men. Wow. They ride out market volatility, they think long term, they make regular contributions, they have lower churn. Wow. Interesting. Um, I want to wrap it up with one question about the LGBT plus community. If you were to change one thing about the community in the business world, what would it be? So I think this is, uh, there's an intersection here between um, what I think makes sense for business, but also the business that I'm running. Mm. So um, we're partnered with MSCI to um, provide socially responsible investment portfolios, but we also grade all of our portfolios against strict SRI criteria um, and ESG criteria. Right. Um, and right now, um, the, the exchange traded funds, the ETFs that we're able to buy in the SRI space, they specifically ask companies um, for information about their gender diversity, but they don't have anything around any other forms of diversity as part of the questionnaires. So what I would like to see, and, and you know, money makes the world go round, right. what I would like to see is for more um, development in this space um, of, of SRI and ESG portfolios, which is a very fast growing part of the investing world, um, to screen and to have higher and more strict criteria around other forms of diversity other than just gender diversity because you know what we'll then buy those ETFs and our customers will invest in those ETFs and that will drive faster change in society.